Now the two most important parts of a gaming PC are the CPU and the GPU. Those have the biggest impact on the overall gaming performance. And let's think about what's in consoles and what that would actually cost to get a rough equivalent on PC. And then again, we'll look at upgrading it from there. So the CPU in consoles is roughly equivalent in gaming performance to a Ryzen 3600, a Ryzen 5 3600. Now these are not super expensive nowadays. Looks like I could find one here for uh, $83. It's not super fast. I'm not saying this is the best value part for a PC build. So now we would need a compatible motherboard. Now one nice thing on PC part picker is once you've picked your CPU, it will only show you compatible motherboards. Um, some of them might need a BIOS update or something like that to be compatible. And now I'm gonna sort prices low to high. And I'm gonna be honest, guys, I'm not going to go for quality high-end components here. We're looking at if we're scraping uh, every dollar possible to try to match the price of a PlayStation 5. A B450M motherboard will be compatible, uh, so this should do the job. So we're just gonna slot this in here, and that is one of the advantages of going with an older CPU, so you can also get an older motherboard that's kind of discounted. But first, we need to talk about a huge mistake so many people make when they upgrade their gaming PC setup, and that is they do not think about the chair they will be sitting in the entire time they will be using it, and that is absolutely crucial. Your lower back will thank you if you get a high-quality ergonomic chair uh, like the one I got from Flexispot with their C7 ergonomic chair when they sponsored me a couple of months ago, and today they just want me to update you on how it's gone. Well, it has uh, been great for my lower back. My favorite thing about this chair is the self-adaptive back support that you can tune to your liking, along with all of the other adjustability. It's amazing to be able to get a chair that can just fit you just right and give you that proper support. Uh, the downside has been that my wife liked it so much, it's ended up in her classroom. So luckily, uh, Flexispot has ended up giving me uh, another C7, and the only difference I made, uh, because I love the C7 so much, was I did get the mesh foam, um, the mesh bottom instead of the foam bottom this time, because I really like the breathability of the mesh. That has been really nice. And the best thing I can do for you guys today is get you uh, $30 off a purchase of $400 plus on the C7 if you use code C730 when you click the link in the pinned comment uh, and or video description. And Flexispot backs their chairs with a 30-day return policy and a 15-year warranty so you can try it out with confidence. Now, uh, where are we going to go from here? Well, we'll also need some memory. And um, you could get by if you had to on two eight gigabyte sticks. You don't want to go with one stick, but I'd prefer if it's not that much more money to pay uh, for uh, two 16 gigabyte sticks, making multitasking better. Although again, if you are absolutely shredding every dollar off the price, uh, you could, like I said, go, go from here. Now I'm gonna sort prices low to high. And when you're picking RAM, uh, higher speeds are better but lower late latency is better. And overall, first word latency kind of takes both of those things into account. So uh, DDR4 3200CL16 is better than CL22, uh, uh, and it, these cost only $1 more to go up to that level. And then uh, spending more money doesn't get us much faster. Uh, until we're spending a lot more, which I don't think is gonna be value efficient here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go with this one. Now I will note that if you wanna be sure for RAM compatibility, you can check your motherboard manufacturer's QVL list, qualified vendor list, uh, but that's not uh, necessarily gonna be required. Usually um, uh, things will end up being compatible even if they are not specifically on that list, uh, but I will throw that in there as a note. Now a CPU cooler could be nice. However, a cooler should come in the box for a Ryzen 5 3600. And if you want to improve um, you know, noise and things like that, you could slot in like a $30 cooler or something like that if you need to. But like I said, we're, we're saving money on this thing. Uh, now, so we've locked in the basic platform that other stuff's gonna plug into. The next most, uh, and, and by the way, thinking about memory is kind of, it kind of supports the CPU, right? So those, those kind of go together. And we've got the basic platform and now we need a video card. Now, the GPU in the PlayStation 5 doesn't have a direct PC counterpart. However, the closest counterpart is an AMD Radeon RX 6700 non-XT. 
Now, a console will have unified memory rather than dedicated VRAM and separate system RAM. So that setup's gonna be a little bit different, uh, but the PS5 would have 16 gigabytes of unified memory for the system and then a able to use about 12 gigabytes uh, for actual games when they want to. Also, sometimes console games are more optimized for their platform uh, than they are in the PC equivalents. So if we want to be as good or a little bit better than a, uh, than a 6700, basically than what's in a PS5, uh, if you go in the AMD route, we could go with a 6700 XT, um, which is a bit faster than what we would see in a PlayStation 5, assuming games are opt optimized equally, or you know this would give us some wiggle room for those optimizations. And then uh, if you're going the NVIDIA route, um, you know you go with an RTX 4060, although then you only have eight gigabytes of VRAM and it is a bit slower. If we go ahead and check video card pricing, uh, the 4060 is at, uh, if I sort prices low to high, $300 right now. And a uh, 6700 XT is at, is, uh, XT, there we go, uh, is at $300. Now, sometimes a 6750 is the same price and is slightly faster. Right now it's $20 more. So if we're gonna, uh, so I, I think the better value between the two would be this 6700 XT right now. And again, this is getting us uh, console, uh, you know, a little better performance than the GPU in a PlayStation 5. Uh, again, you could slot in an RTX 4060, you get DLSS, but you're also slower overall and only have eight gigabytes of VRAM. And if we're kind of making a gaming console in PC fo uh, form, you know, this is closer to what you're actually getting in a, in a, in a PlayStation 5. Anyway, uh, so from here, we've locked in most of what would give you PlayStation 5 performance, although they also have a fast SSD. Uh, so if we want to get maybe a one terabyte SSD, I'm going to filter this to, you know, around a thousand gigabytes and I'm going to click SSD. I'm going to sort prices low to high and we're going to see what's available here. Now, SATA SSDs are not much cheaper than the cheaper NVMe drives, which will be faster. Um, and so in, as long as you have an M.2 slot, you might as well go with one of the uh, NVMe's, which we have here. And then uh, you kind of look at the speeds of what's available here. Like just because this is an M.2 form factor drive, uh, it, this is still using a SATA connection. So that's not gonna be super fast. And as I look through these, uh, you could kind of pull up their Amazon pages and look at their speeds and things like that. Um, I do see here uh, that we can get a PCIe 4.0 drive, which would be closer to what's in the PlayStation 5. Uh, for $61, which is not a lot more money than we're, than we're seeing on these uh, slower drives. So I'm gonna go ahead and slot that in there for $61. Uh, so now uh, we've got the fast SSD, we've got a GPU that's better than the PS5, a CPU that's roughly on par with the PS5, and that's pretty much the important stuff. Now we just need a case and a power supply. I'm gonna say right now, I am not only not a case expert, but also a, a case, a lot of it is personal preference on what you want this thing to look like. You do wanna make sure it's big enough to fit your components. Some people want a real small form factor and then you have to be really careful with your part selection and things like that. Um, I, I'm gonna go ahead and sort price low to high. One thing I will mention is uh, with cases, if you get one without fans, you're gonna have to buy fans separately, and generally you'll pay more doing that than getting a case that comes bundled with the fans. Also, uh, for airflow and cooling reasons, it's nice to have a mesh front to pull air through more easily. And if I sort prices low to high on these, I think a bunch of these could work. Um, I've been a fan in the value segments of uh, a lot of times, uh, Montech has had some good deals lately. Like I said, I'm not a, a huge case expert. So we could certainly go cheaper here. I'm just kind of scrolling and seeing what we get. Like this Montech Air uh, 903, this is not only gonna have, uh, I think three fans um, that it comes with here, a couple in the front and one in the back. Um, uh, but also, uh, you know, maybe a uh, white build like the PlayStation 5, I don't know, or maybe you don't want white. So I'm gonna go ahead and slot in this case. It's not the cheapest case, it's not the most expensive case, but it has a mesh front, comes with three fans. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. Keep in mind that this is kind of a placeholder. You might prefer a different case. Now we need a power supply. Uh, you don't wanna get an absolute junk power supply that could fry your, your system. Uh, we also don't need a huge wattage on this thing to, uh, to uh, support our build. 
Now, I will say that sometimes there's particularly good deals available. Uh, if you kind of just scroll through and see, um, see what's up. Uh, some of these are kind of popping out as decent deals. Another thing is you can, you can filter uh, based on, okay, I want like uh, 80 plus bronze at least. By the way, these are efficiency ratings, not quality ratings, so it doesn't guarantee that your uh, PSU is not gonna be junk. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and sort price low to high, but I don't want something uh, super low on power. The cheapest ones um, look like $46. Uh, you can also look at the kind of wattage you're getting for these, but like, I don't know much about Raid Max. There's a PSU Cultist tier list you can check um, to look at um, uh, the quality of these. I am noticing this Corsair CX 2023, 650 watts um, for $55. That doesn't seem too bad. Um, scrolling up here a bit, ooh, we can get another 100 watts on it here, uh, Corsair CX 2023. Um, again, it's only 80 plus bronze. This is not some kind of amazing power supply, uh, but for only $5 more, and we're not much above the absolute bottom end, we have a reasonable name brand. It's not one of their higher end lines, but I, I wouldn't feel bad about this powering this level of a system. So we're at a $60 power supply, and where are we at here? Looks like we're at $678. So uh, again, there are small differences here. We could save a bit of money on the case for sure. You could go down to 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of 32 and save uh, sa save a little bit more money on that. Uh, but other than that, to be better than a PS5, we haven't spent much more than we absolutely have to. If you wanna round this out to $700, uh, maybe throw in a $30 CPU cooler, uh, like the Thermalright Peerless Assassin, um, which can uh, be more than enough to cool this. But again, like I said, this does come with a stock cooler. So we have now made a PC that should be better than a PlayStation 5. Uh, at least in the GPU and at least match it in the CPU for $678. Certainly costs more than a PlayStation 5 does, but again, it's not subsidized hardware. So if we wanna spend more than this, I think you can get to more of a sweet spot um, by uh, upgrading several things here. Now, one, the biggest standout to me in this build is I don't like the CPU. The Ryzen 5 3600 is as good as a PS5, but a lot of PS5 games can even struggle to hit 60 FPS on the CPU. And that's certainly the case in, uh, in some games right now on a system like this. Now we could stay on the AM4 platform, this motherboard, and upgrade to a faster CPU on this platform, but the problem is this is an old platform, which means that newer CPUs not gonna have a lot of upgradability and things like that. So for me personally, if I'm gonna spend more money on this system, I would consider upgrading both the CPU and the GPU. The CPU, I would go up to a, high, a a newer platform. So to do that, I'm gonna remove this motherboard and the CPU and this memory, and I'm gonna jump in to a, a new AM5 platform from AMD. Now you could consider some Intel options. Um, the reason I'm gonna go with AMD here is that Intel's current CPUs are at their end of, uh, their motherboards are at their end of life. There's not gonna be any more CPUs coming in on that platform, whereas AMD should support at least one and maybe two more generations on this platform, so it'd be easier to get some big upgrades without having to tear apart your entire PC and motherboard and all of that. Uh, so, um, and the Ryzen 5 7600 is going to be a good gaming performance with a lot of upgradable uh, potential uh, for under $200. But we're certainly spending more money now, right? We're also gonna need to get a motherboard uh, that is um, a good choice to go along with this build. Now, Hardware Unboxed has recently uh, reviewed a bunch of uh, the newer AM5 motherboards, and some of these cheaper ones stood out as not uh, having great cooling, which can throttle the CPUs if you have a higher-end CPU. This isn't a high-end CPU, but again, if we're thinking about upgradability, if we could get something reasonable, um, for not a whole lot extra money. So I did double check that this ASRock B650M Pro uh, motherboard is, okay, it's $130, but it did do well on the VRM testing and things like that, and it wasn't that much more expensive than the, um, uh, than the one that we saw, uh, than the absolute bottom tier. Also for memory, if you're on the AM5 platform, you're now buying DDR5 memory. And I recommend getting at least DDR5 6000 CL30 memory uh, because it's kind of the sweet spot for speed and value. So we've slotted that in. Again, we're definitely spending more money on that. 
Now, um, on the GPU, since I hadn't really talked about that yet, I might, uh, I might uh, remove this for a second, but we've left the other things the same, right? So this is basically the same build we had, but with an upgraded CPU and no GPU. If we slot in the same 6700 XT that we had before, uh, the build price is now $900. But I think to round this out to around $1,000, it makes sense to also upgrade the, C the, the GPU as well. Because I'll say right now, it feels like we're spending too much on the CPU compared to the GPU that we have slotted in. So I think it makes sense to also upgrade this. Now, this will drastically affect the budget, and that kind of affects the rest of the system overall, uh, is, is really just what GPU do we want. If we want to go up to around the $400 price range, um, uh, from the NVIDIA options, you have a 4060 Ti, uh, which costs around $390, but this is still only an eight gigabyte graphics card. That means compared to like a PlayStation 5, for example, uh, which can run really high-end textures and things like that, in certain games, you might have performance issues trying to run those high-end textures on the 4060 Ti and the higher resolutions, things like that. Um, whereas AMD's uh, 7700 XT ha has recently dropped in price to around $380, and this comes with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. But last time I checked, and I want to check this here again, AMD's last generation 6800 is about as fast as a 7700 XT. It's faster than a uh, 4060 Ti, um, but has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and it's at $370, so it's less expensive than all of those. So at around the $400-ish, under $400 options for GPUs, I think this is one's the best value overall. And we're now much faster than the GPU in a, uh, in a PlayStation 5. So again, if the PlayStation 5 GPU is around a 6700, then the RX 6800 is about 44% faster. So that allows you to either, uh, you know, run at higher frame rates than the PlayStation 5 does, or you could run at higher re rendering resolutions than the PlayStation 5 does. Because let's talk about this for a second. Uh, a lot of people are like, a PS5 is 500 bucks and you run 4K gaming. Usually it's not a native 4K resolution. It's usually heavily upscaled to reach a 4K output, and oftentimes if it is running closer to an actual 4K output, it's running at 30 frames per second. If it's running at 60 frames per second, it's often rendering well below 4K resolution and upscaling uh, using FSR upscaling or some other types as well. So we're doing much better than a, um, a uh, PS5 would with this GPU. Again, like I said, the 4060 Ti is an option as well. However, that has half the VRAM and is slower, although you do get access to better upscaling. Also better ray tracing, but I'm not real sold on ray tracing performance in this, uh, sorry, in this performance tier. So anyway, um, this brings our, our build up to about $1,000. Another thing that's standing out here is a box cooler on this level of a build does feel a little bit silly. Uh, so spending $30, it's not really gonna improve your performance. Um, but it might sound better <laughs> as far as that goes. It will keep the CPU cooler. You might get a little bit better boosting potential and things like that, but really um, it's not that big of a deal, but slotting in $30 does put us to right at $1,000 now uh, for this overall setup. Now, a 750 watt power supply is still good enough for this build. This isn't the highest end power supply, uh, but I don't think we're stressing out it out too much because the CPU doesn't draw a whole lot of power. Um, anyway, so here we are at $1,000. Now, what would I upgrade from here? Now, you could upgrade the CPU, but honestly, in most situations, this is absolutely fine. And I think you're more likely to be GPU limited and so upgrading the GPU could be uh, your next best bet. So if you were going to upgrade the GPU from here, you have several options. Now for me, again, it depends on exactly where your budget limit is, but past this point, I will say that if you're trying to take advantage of the kind of the PC element of this rather than the console element of it, one advantage PCs have is if you go with an NVIDIA GPU, you do have access to a better upscaler like DLSS and a better um, and better ray tracing performance, which again is only a, a real, much of a selling point if you go uh, fairly high end on the GPU. So what gets us there? 
Well, if you go up to a 4070 Super, see the 4070 is the first NVIDIA GPU that I actually kind of like. Um, because it's finally more than eight gigabytes of VRAM and isn't a stupidly overpriced 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti. Um, however, the thing is the 4070 Supers are about 15% faster than that. And I'm finding some of them right now for 580, which isn't really that much more than the 4070. So I kind of like the idea of jumping up to one of these cheaper 4070 Supers. And if we do that, we're now at a $1,200 build and we have um, a, a GPU that is massively more powerful than what is in a PlayStation 5. If we jump up to a 4070 Super on this list, we're 86% more powerful than, than a roughly equivalent PS5 GPU. That means we're almost doubling the performance. Um, now, not only that though, but we also have access to a better upscaler. So if we are relying on an upscaler, which consoles definitely do frequently, uh, will not will also look better, which also might mean we could run it more aggressively. In which case, you're like gonna more than double your performance if you're using more aggressive upscaling because you have you know access to that. Anyway, the point is, uh, this is a very strong build here. Now, if you would prefer to go with an AMD option uh, at this price point, then the uh, the competitors to the 4070 Super would be the 7900 GRE. So if we take a look at that, the 7900 GRE is coming in at about $550 MSRP, but it looks like you can get them as low as 540. So if I slot in a $540 7900 GRE, you can see that it's not that much different in the difference in the overall price. And in rasterized performance, uh, the 4070 Super and the 7900 GRE perform about the same. Uh, there's not a massive difference between the two. Uh, so for example, if I slot these in according to tech power-ups results, there's like a 2% advantage to the rasterized performance on the 7900 GRE. In ray tracing workloads, the 4070 Super is faster. And if you're upscaling, it has a better looking upscaler. So with all of that in mind, personally, I prefer the 4070 Super over the 7900 GRE. Now I know some people will be concerned about 12 gigabytes of VRAM compared to 16 gigabytes of VRAM on the 7900 GRE. And if that's the case for you, uh, then you could definitely choose a 7900 GRE. So I'm showing you that is absolutely an option. Uh, my personal choice, like I said, would probably be to go with the 4070 Super route. Anyway, you could certainly go beyond this point, uh, but I think beyond this point is definitely diminishing returns on the value proposition. I think this right here is a very good value gaming PC that is, gonna be about twice as fast as a PlayStation 5 in a lot of situations. Um, but yeah, it does cost about twice as much as, uh, or, or more than a, than a PS5. So you do have to, to accept that. But anyway, that's where we're at for today's video. Hopefully you guys found the lists useful. I'll probably include links in the, in the video description or a pinned comment or something like that. And um, uh, hopefully again, you like the thought process behind it. Again, there's a lot of different parts as parts change in all of this that you could use. Uh, as kind of substitutions for these. So it's good to understand why we made these choices as prices on individual components fluctuate. I hope all of you have an excellent day.